how's everyone doing? Of course, cool, so I realize it's been quite a long day. Um, I am the last speaker, so I'm going to keep it quite light. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to see how quickly I can get through this. Um, but essentially, what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, crowdsourcing media exposure. Now, what, what does that mean? Um, I'm looking at alternative ways of getting your brand message out there if you don't have billions and billions of dollars to spend. So first off, I work for a company called Gray. Obviously, they want me to talk about them. So we won lots of shiny awards. Our motto is famously effective. These are our clients. Cool. Enough about that. Um, if my boss asks, I did talk about it. OK. Let's look at advertising as a standard model. How does advertising work, essentially? First thing that we need to do is we need to find out who are we talking to. And that obviously takes a lot of research and lots of money and experience and all those kind of things. The second step is to say, what is the message? In this case, we are the best company ever, so buy our product. It's obviously not as simple as that. It's quite a process. Um, third step would be based on the research, knowing who you're talking to, knowing what you need to say. You start creating your assets, whether it be uh, print, radio, TV, billboards, etc. doesn't matter, depending on, on how you actually get to your audience. Audience. And then the last thing, which is very, very vitally important, is to actually get this in front of your audience. Now, this is the most expensive part. Um, lots of money involved with this. Uh, not everyone can just get out there and get your message in front of everyone. Obviously, something like a TV ad can, work, can cost you millions of dollars and millions of US dollars just to get it on TV, never mind to get it in front of the right eyeballs and, and for a long enough time. Um, so obviously that's enough for success, right? Not always. Uh, sometimes your brand is just really crappy and nothing kills a bad product faster than good advertising. So step one is to find out that you have a, to make sure that you have a good product before you actually punt it and put money behind it. Okay, so if we want to show something to our audience, what do we show them? What do, we, what do we say to these people to convince them to go buy our product? Okay, it's, it's actually quite tricky. In the beginning, it was very, very simple. If you look at this example, this is a video I'm going to play of the world's very first TV ad. It was in 1941. America runs on bull of a time. Fascinating. <laughs> I love the special effects. Um, the second TV ad was slightly more involved. This was, this was done a couple of years later, about 10 years later or 11 years later in, in Britain. I'm just going to play a few seconds of it to prove my point. It's tingling fresh. It's fresh as ice. It gives SR toothpaste, the tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good too. The tingle you get when you brush with SR is much more than a nice taste. It's a tingle of health. It tells you something very important, that you're doing your gums good and toughening them to resist infection. And as this chart shows, gum infection is the cause of more tooth losses than decay itself. Science. OK, so this is the, the world's first web banner. Uh, it says, have you ever clicked your mouse right here? And then it just says, you will. Uh, this was a, a, a banner for, um uh, for the seven, uh, sorry, it's promote the Seven Arts Museum, sponsored by at and If you look, it doesn't even have a call to action, but this, this puppy got a, a click-through rate of 44%. 2016 industry standards is 0.3%. So the point I'm trying to make here, before I fast forward, is that the media of TV was quite new. In the, in, the, in the beginning there. So you could, have put it, you could put anything on there, quite frankly. It was a moving picture. That was amazing. People were just like wowed by the fact that pictures could move. Um, same with a web banner. First web banner ever. People were just wowed by this thing, whatever it is. I mean, it's, now no one will click on that thing. There's absolutely no chance in hell. And if you fast forward a little bit later to where we are today, I hope this video plays. We had a f bit of technical issues upstairs earlier. This is the kind of stuff we've seen today. Yeah, that's quite an extreme example, but what it comes down to is like when the medium loses its novelty value, the content needs to work a lot harder to break through the clutter. Now, this is quite a challenge for advertisers because we are surrounded by content. Everywhere we go, there's content. So in a world drowning in this content, how do you actually get people's attention? Um, 
Because your brand can quite easily become wallpaper like this. It can just disappear into, into the ether of, of communication that is out there. And this is quite a challenge for us, um, specifically with smaller clients with smaller budgets, because they don't have the money to research, and they don't have the money to cast you know, uh, Hollywood celebrities to endorse their messages. It becomes quite challenging. And quite frankly, the way it works is the person with the most money gets the most eyeballs. It's as simple as that. Even with something like the internet and social media and those kind of things being out there, it's still the case. If you want to have mass reach, you have to put a hell of a lot of money behind it in order to get in front of uh, uh, a whole bunch of people. Um, and quite frankly, as a consumer, our guard is always up. Uh, we are so oblivious to advertising because you're literally seeing ads everywhere you go. There's billboards in the streets, there's, there's print ads, there's ads on your phone, in your inbox, it's all over the place. So it's, it's quite hard to break through that. So what we do at Gray, or we try to do, is we try to not make ads, because ads don't work anymore. Some ads do, yes they do, specifically retail ones, buy this TV now of 20% off, pretty simple message, nothing really innovative there. But for us to really push our clients, we try to not make ads, because what we believe in is something like long ideas. We call it not big ideas, but long ideas. A long idea is something that infiltrates popular culture and people talk about it. Now, as soon as you start getting people to talk about your idea, that's when you start crowdsourcing your media exposure without you having to push it, without you having to put millions of dollars behind it. You can rather spend those millions of dollars in like, paying your employees properly, I wish. Anyway. So, here's a case study I want to show you guys today that's very close to my heart because this is an example of where we used exactly this methodology for a very little brand called the SPCA. Um, SPCA in South Africa, they protect animals, they have animal shelters, um, and at Gray South Africa, we've got a whole bunch of animal lovers, and we actually do quite a few pro bono projects for our clients to help animals, to give a little something back to, to the world. And in our country, we've got a problem, which recently when we presented this case study at a con conference in Iceland, believe it or not, um, people looked at us quite confused. Apparently, dog fighting is not a big problem across the globe. So let me give it a little bit of an introduction. I'm sorry this is a little bit grim, but but this is the reality we face in South Africa. Dog fighting is a multi-million rand um, industry in our country. And what it basically is, is people have mostly pit bulls, and they train them up, and they make them strong, and they make them aggressive. How they make them aggressive is they go around to people's houses, and they steal small dogs, little poodles, little French bulldogs, little sausage dogs, etc. And they throw them in a pit with these pit bulls for them to destroy them to get a taste for blood. It's disgusting. Um, they then put money on this, and it becomes a bit of a gambling thing, and they start making a hell of a lot of money in the process. Now, the SPCA came to us and said, um, guys, we can't get the message out there about dog fighting. People aren't interested anymore. They're not paying attention. We put all these photos of gory, mauled up dogs on, on social media, and we don't get any responses. No one shares it. We don't get money from it. Like, it's actually completely disappeared. It's become wallpaper. So we decided, how do we stop a dog fight? We can start one. It sounds a little bit crazy, but here's what we did. We created a mobile billboard. That's it. That's all we did. It says, fight night, pit bull tournament, in, uh, Nitro versus Thor. You can go to CajunRules.coza to book your seat, or you can go phone this number 071, etc. The Cajun Rules website we put up, we, you can see obviously this design is disgusting. We try to make it as ugly as possible. The poor designer that worked on this uh, as a CD, I had to keep going past it going, no, make it bad. It needs to be bad and ugly. We don't want anything nice. Um, we put a website up, and we had a call, a number that people could call that went straight to a voicemail number that you can leave a message. Uh, yeah, so that thing drove up and down William Nickel Drive in Santon in, in Johannesburg. It's quite a busy road. That's all it did. This billboard, so by the way, cost us 7,000 Rand, which, yeah, I'm not creative. I'm creative. I'm not a mathematician, but I think it's about 450 odd euros. It's not a hell of a lot. Um, within an hour, social media completely exploded. Uh, the website at one stage had 500 people per second come through it. Uh, we crashed our hosting company servers. Uh, we were on the radio, we were on the front page of the newspapers. Some clever hacker found my name in the back of one of the images. He did a reverse Google search and um, he could actually find out who registered the domain. The police were looking for me. Um, I had bouncers at our office and, and the biker gang and it was quite dramatic. Uh, the phone line, <laughs> we got some serious abuse on our phone line. This was a real message. Uh, please, uh, the guy actually said, please call me in person so I can tell you exactly what I, you are. Um, and we got all SMSs and messages. People got really, really, really pissed off. Okay, so before I get there, this campaign was supposed to run for three days. Um, within three hours, the site was taken down. 
by the hosting company, which is exactly what we wanted. We were spoken about on every single radio station. We were already in the limelight. Um, we got more attention than we ever thought we would. And we had to reveal the campaign was actually a campaign and not just a dogfight. Uh, so we had to very quickly put together this banner that we slapped on, on top of our mobile billboard that just says, did this fake dogfight make you see red? Stand up against dogfighting, SMS stop to you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on our website, we put a message saying, turn your anger into action. Donate here, uh, anonymous tip-offs, you know, those kind of things. And um, <clears throat> social media lit up once again. Most people say this is the worst campaign I've ever seen. It's completely insensitive. It's terrible. Worst advertising in the history of the world. Exactly what we wanted. It's, the more people complain about the stuff, the further it gets. It's the thing. People don't share good news stories. They, they share stuff that pisses them off. It's, it's ridiculous, but that's how it works. And it worked. I mean, hell, we were... <laughs> so 702 is one of our biggest radio stations in South Africa. And we had about an hour slot where we didn't talk. They spoke about us. Uh, they spread this thing. We had full page spreads in the Sunday Times and the Star, which is like our wide, most widely spread newspaper in the country, without putting a cent behind the media at all. So the results of this was quite phenomenal. Uh, these are just some more posts of people uh, expressing either their anger or their love for the campaign. So by the way, in terms of sentiment, we had a 70% positive sentiment and a 30% negative sentiment. We actually wanted it the other way around. We would have gotten a little bit more exposure had more people hated it. So the results, we got 22,000 hits on the website in three hours. We got the advertising value of 1.7 million rand. I specifically kept this in rand and didn't convert it to euro because you guys will laugh at our measly little rand value. It's 15 to 1, so do the math. Um, but essentially, that's what a large company like Gillette would spend on a TV ads media um, in South Africa. Uh, the PR value was 5 million, which is enormous. We got 29 million impressions across all media. This has subsequently been updated to 56 million in our last, um, last presentation we received from our media guys. Uh, we reached 110 countries. We trended on Twitter. We dominated the conversation on Facebook. They saved 45 dogs when I made this presentation. We're sitting at 58 at the moment. Um, 13 people were arrested at this time. We're sitting at about 21 at this point in time. And we had so many leads pour in that the Special Investigation Unit for the SPC I had to hire more people. We were told by the Pitbull Association of South Africa that we did more for Pitbulls in, in three hours than they could have done in the last 20 years. It just absolutely didn't work. And all we had to do is we had to piss people off with the right message, essentially crowdsourcing the media. What we spent on this was zero spend on media, and you can see the results speak for themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, we just spent a little bit of production money on making that really disgusting billboard, which was cheaply made. It was supposed to look cheap, like some dog fighting guy made it in his garage. And that cost us 7,000 Rand. And that is how we crowdsourced media for this campaign. Um, I've got like two minutes left. There was another video I wanted to show you, but I think I'm going to cut it short so we can maybe go to questions. I'm going to skip this. Thanks. <laughs> The video. Is a video show? Skip. Are there any questions? All right. Yeah. Question. The, the microphone, because we need to. Is this what Trump did? Is this what who did? Is this what Donald Trump did? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I think Donald Trump is the biggest prank to ever hit TV, <laughs> you know, to be honest. I think uh, when he won the election, he probably crapped himself. I don't think he wanted to win. Yeah, but he pissed a lot of people off and it worked. Yeah. Oh, yes, no, totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I can't comment on that, unfortunately. Not my president, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, yeah. One up there? Just. Great presentation, thank you so much. Thank I just you. wondered what ambitions you've got for the future, what, what you're passionate about, and what, what, you, what sort of change that you want to, uh, to, to affect in the future. Yeah, it's a big question. Um, specifically to SPCA or to myself, or to our company? myself. Well, well, let me talk about the company, seeing that I'm here in that capacity. Um, what we're trying to do as an agency is to get our minds around these kind of things, not making ads and not being bogged down, sitting down, creating beautiful designs and those kind of things. So what we've done is we've actually crowdsourced that function now too. We work with lots of smaller bespoke design agencies and we've realized that we're thinkers. We sit in a room, we come up with cool ideas and we come up with solutions that make the world a better place. And if we don't get bogged down designing and animating and editing and all the kinds of things that creative directors usually do, um, we can do more of this kind of work. So for me personally, this was one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on. It was 
was no budget, it was tiny. I mean, I work on, I, we do all the advertising for Volvo, for PNG, Gillette, like big companies, and it's boring. We're selling razors. I mean, it's one day we're not going to look at my grandchildren and say, I remember the Mach 3 with the 17 blades. Yes, that was me. You know, that's, that's not the kind of stuff I want to leave as a legacy. So I think for myself, it's like using the creative thinking and the talents that I got given to do this kind of work, something that actually makes a difference. And obviously, we work it into the real day work. We still have bills to pay and we still have salaries to pay. But this kind of stuff is what I'd like to do. Great. Uh, Dan, one more, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, I appreciate the fact that when you work for uh, mostly in the pri private sector, although this was an NGO, I understand provoking is, a, is an easier way to get attention. Some companies actually come up with campaigns that they know would be censored or immediately uh, removed because they yeah. create controversy. How do you do it when you, wor you work for the uh, public sector, when your campaigns are funded by the public and you cannot offend and you cannot provoke? Because by definition, okay, disclaimer, I work for the EU. And we are struggling to find ways to uh, uh, attract attention without spending uh, huge amounts of money. But I could never uh, get away with, with provoking or insulting anyone mm. with public money. I hear you. I think, look, this, this idea came out of about a week-long brainstorming. It's a bit of a tough question to answer on the spot, but I'll be, happily, I'll be happy to chat to you afterwards. But there's other ways of doing it. The last case study they wanted to show was not a, a case where somebody, um, somebody got, you know, got annoyed at, in, in order to get more media exposure. It's an example where Volvo in the States piggybacked on other people's ads during the Super Bowl because they didn't have a big enough budget to compete with 50 million US dollars for a 30-second slot. So what they did was, whenever you see any car ad, doesn't matter matter which one it is, SMS, X2, whatever, and you could win a Volvo. And what they did is they completely stole the Super Bowl. They owned it. They, they got more media exposure than any one of the other car brands. And that was proudly done by Gray in New York, which is our sister company. So there are lots of other ways of doing it. You don't necessarily have to piss people off. That just really works. <laughs> yeah. Great. I think we need to wrap her up because we're also one looking forward to do more networking and you get to ask more questions. Uh, Francois, thank you very much. Cool. Appreciate Thanks, guys. Appreciate here. it. Thank Cheers. you. Awesome. Thanks, Cheers. Yeah. This is for you.